The next Our speaker, next speaker uh, comes from the Saint Lyon in southern France. Where? In Lyon. Lyon. Ah, Lyon. Okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, how, how do you say Lyon in, in, in English? In English, I say lion. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, probably. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, so he will talk about a Swift 4 feature which is uh, somewhat underused, which is um, key parts. So Thank you. please welcome Vincent Pradey. Good afternoon. So, like they said, my name is Vincent Pradey and I work at Worldline in Lyon. And to begin this afternoon, I want to talk to you about the underestimated power of key paths. So, before we delve into the subject, quick reminder what key paths are. So, key paths, they are a feature that was introduced with Swift 4. And basically, they are a way to defer a call to the getter or setter of a property. So, what do they look like in code? They are a type with two generic parameters. The first one is the type of the object you're going to call the key pass on, and the second one is the type of the property that you want to access. And how do you construct them? You use this syntax, so it's backslash name of the type dot name of the property, and in the main instances where the name of the type can be inferred, you can just not show it, and of course you can chain for nested properties. So how do you use them? First, you need an instance of an object on which to call it, so here, a string. And then you use it with a subscript that takes a key path and returns the value. So basically, it's just like working with an object that would act like a statically checked dictionary. And if you try to think about it, you're going to very quickly see that they perform the same job than a closure, but basically with less curly braces and dollar zeros hanging, hanging around. So what I want to show you is how they can be efficiently leveraged because I don't see many people using them in their code base and it's really a shame because they are kind of awesome. So the example I'm going to take is data manipulation because it's a topic we all know about. So in Swift, we have a great thing is that in the standard library, we have a lot of generic functions to manipulate data like sorting, filtering, mapping, and they work with closure. So it's kind of awesome. The only little thing is that you need to define functions in line, and that means some extra syntax, so curly braces, dollar zeros, dollar ones. So with KeePass, maybe we could better it and make it look like something like this, something much cleaner. So how can we implement it in our code? It's actually kind of simple. So I'm going to walk you through the code. First, we're going to define an extension of sequence, because that's where all the functions to manipulate data are. Then we're going to define a function called sorted. It's going to take as attribute a key pass. So the key pass is meant to be called on the element of the sequence. And of course, it needs to return a comparable property because we're doing comparison-based uh, sorting. And inside, we are just going to call the sorted function from the standard library that works with closures. In the closures, we use the key pass to get the actual value of the property on our arguments. We compare them, and voila, we can call, we can now sort with a much shorter and cleaner syntax. And of course, the same ideas goes for all the classic functions, so like mean, max, sum, average, map, etc. And actually, if you don't want to take the time to write all those wrappers functions, you don't even have to, because for instance, you can write an operator, a prefix operator, that's going to take a key path, is going to work on a key path, is going to turn it into a closure. Process is simple. We return a function that accesses the attribute via the key pass. And then, wherever the code expects a closure, we can just pass a key pass with the operator to transform it. And that's it. We have much shorter code. And of course, if you don't like custom operators, which makes sense, you can also use uh, global functions named like two, for instance, and it will wor work the same. Now that we've seen this first example, I want to take it one step further and look at DSL, so domain-specific languages. So some of you, the people that worked with Objective-C mainly, I think you remember NS Predicate, which was a great system to write complex queries on an array. The bad thing when we use it in Swift is that it's not a typed API, so basically it has any optional everywhere, and it's kind of a pain to work with. So we could want to have a 
type system of predicates to manipulate data. And before Swift 4, if you wanted to implement it, you had to use closures like this. So it does the job, the job very well. But the thing is, in the same line, we've defined two functions. And we can easily see this kind of syntax going out of hand. The great thing about key paths is that we can use them here and we can really get much cleaner and expressive code. Because when you look at this, basically, it kind of looks like SQL and you don't have any extra syntax. It's very easy to read. So I'm going to show you how you can implement such a predicate system in your code. To do so, I'm going to define it in four steps. First, I'm going to tell you more into details what a predicate is then how you can construct it, how you can combine predicates, and finally, how you can evaluate them. So a predicate, basically, it's a fancy mathematical name for a function that evaluates to a Boolean value. So how do we store it in Swift? We just define a predicate type. It's a generic type. It stores a condition, so a function that takes an element and returns a bool, and we have a function to evaluate the predicate, meaning calling the condition. Pretty simple here. Then, how do we construct predicates? We can see that in the goal syntax, we want to use comparison operators with, on the left side, a key path, and on the right side, a constant. The great thing is that comparison operators do exist in Swift, and it's perfectly fine to implement them for new types. So I'm going to walk, walk you through it. So I'm going to define a new implementation for the lesser than or equal operator. On the left hand side is going to take a key path that's going to work on an element and return an attribute of a comparable type. On the right hand side, I'm going to take a constant. Like I said, my function is going to construct a predicate so it will return it. And inside, what do I do? I construct a predicate and my condition is just, I call the predicate on a value and I compare it to the constant. Since the key pass and the constant are of both the same type T that is comparable, it works fine. And with this, I have now constructed a predicate. So now, for the greater than operator, it's basically the same thing. The only thing that changes is the operator that you use. So now we have simple, like atomic predicates. We want to combine them. So to combine them, we use the end operator. And once again, it's an operator that is defined in the Swift standard library. So we just need to make it work with predicates. How do we do that? We, def we implement the end function to work with predicates on both sides and return a predicate. And inside, we just create a new predicate that evaluates its left hand side and its right hand side and does a logical end in between. So nothing fancy here. And finally, to evaluate a predicate, we just add a new function to sequence. It's called select. It takes a predicate. And inside, we just call the filter function that we all know. And we evaluate the predicate for every element in the sequence. And that's all. With that, we can build this kind of syntax. But of course, we can take it a step further. For instance, we could implement the right operators to make it work with ranges to get also first element to know if uh, a sequence contains some kind of value, etc. So let's recap on everything that we've just seen. We've seen that KeePath offered a way to defer the reading and writing to a property, so kind of like a closure. We've seen that they also allow for a very clean and expressive syntax because basically you just add a backslash and that's it. So it's like uh, the minimum overhead. They work very well with generic algorithms, such as algorithms that implies data structures. And for this reason, they are a great tool to, buy, to build any kind of DSLs, basically. So in conclusion of this talk, what I want you to remember is that key paths are really awesome. And in your code, you should really use them. And I'm sure that if you think about your code base, you're going to see many instances where you have closures that could be reduced, or you have complex logic, and with a predicate, you have really the ability to simplify your code a lot. If you've liked all the functional parts that we've done with the predicates, I highly recommend 
So it's a link to a talk that was done at NSPain last week by Daniel Steinberg, and it focuses solely on the idea of combining simpler functions to build much com more complicated ones. I really liked it, so I can only encourage you to go watch it. I also have a big thank you to Jérôme Alves for his valuable input to the content of this talk. And if you like what I've seen, so, ah, excuse me, if you like what I've shown you, and you want to see more possible implementations, or even if you want to use it in your project, I have a working implementation on GitHub, so feel free to go check it out and see how it's made. And with that being said, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you. I kind of missed this, uh, this uh, new tool when, when it's been launched uh, or introduced by Apple. Uh, how, did you, how did you find it? Like, usually, how do you do your, your uh, how do you follow what's, what's new in the, in the platform? I think like many people, Paul Hudson's site, Hacking with Swift, he's shown uh, this, uh, this ID, this new syntax, and uh, basically, after some time, I've, I thought, yeah, maybe we could start to use it. Because when I saw it, I thought, this is great. I'm sure I'm going to see it in many places. Yeah. And it didn't. <laughs> so I felt, why not look at it? Yeah, I probably, uh, probably think that most of the, the people, even in the room, um, probably missed it. Uh, but it's really interesting. And did you come up uh, yourself with the idea of predicates? Uh, the idea, so it was talking on Slack with Jérôme. We discussed about it. And that's how the idea emerged. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, I think it's kind of great. And I would really like to see Apple put it in foundation, because all the building blocks are here. It's just those annoying any optional that are still hanging around. And do you see any, any, any problems with that? Uh, so KeePath, there is one big caveat that I didn't talk about, is that KeePath, they do not check availability. Basically, if you try to take a KeePath through property that is available from iOS 12, it's going to compile. It's not going to make you check. Try oh, to run it okay. on iOS 11. Guaranteed crash, like in Objective-C. <laughs> nice. So when you use it with your own data structures, I think you're pretty safe, because most of the time, it's very rare that in your model, you, have, you depend on the system. But to use it with like UIKit object, yeah, and especially on, on UIKit, it's uh, the kind UI of kit place where yeah, but it's yeah. the kind of place where it's kind of harder to mm. have a, a huge testing coverage. So definitely, and. Apple don't really say it in the documentation, so <laughs> it hurts yes. when, you, when you miss when you when you encounter that. Yes. Yeah. So, um, well, uh, I actually uh, want to, to repeat what you said. Actually, it's very useful. Uh, there is a website which uh, actually has all the uh, diff of what happens in Swift since uh, the very first version to now, and you can compare uh, like uh, uh, 4.2 to 4.1, or even 4.2 to 3.3, yes. and so on. So it's, it's really a great way to learn in a simple manner about the new version of Swift. Yeah. yeah but sometimes it's, like, it's a lot of work to actually like go through all that. And, Absolutely. Like, sometimes it's just things that are and like, has pointless. Examples. And this one is like seems to be a tiny stuff. And uh, at the yes. end, it, make, it can make a, a huge difference in the you know, code base. Yes, yes. definitely. Okay. Uh, do you see yourself uh, using uh, KeePass elsewhere in your, in your app? Uh, for the moment, no. But I also tend to work on apps that are very data-driven mm -hmm. by web services. Yeah. But uh, people that have some specific domain, I think uh, you can find mm -hmm. places. Yeah, actually. Yeah, and uh, one thing is which is really interesting also is that the fact that um, uh, using KeyPath is not just to have uh, less, I mean, less cumbersome syntax, mm. but also like having a real object that you can use uh, operators on. It's really uh, like it really changes the way you can you can actually build stuff. Yes, of course. And also, a great thing is that since KeyPath is a type, you can write extensions. Whereas closures, basically, you're yeah. stuck with either global functions or custom operators, and neither are the best choices in many instances. Yeah, except if you patch the compiler, maybe. <laughs> of course. Yeah. So I think we we are good. Yes. Thank you very much for your talk. Thank you. Thank you.